Hi there, and welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections. Today's video is going to focus once again on the Atari 5200. And specifically, this is going to focus on a four port unit like you can see here. Now, let's just get right to the point. The four port unit is a very cool system as far as variants go in that it does offer the four controller ports, which honestly only like two games were ever used to utilize that. But it was unique in one aspect, and that was that it used this crazy little RF switch box, which allowed you to actually plug in the power and the Atari into this box so that only just the one single RF cable would have both the video and the power transmit through this single cable to the 5200 to function on your TV. Another unique aspect of the switch box was that it was an automatic switch box, so you didn't actually have to get up and flip a switch to turn it from the game mode to the TV mode. It could do that automatically, provided you were on the right channel on your TV when you turned on the Atari. But using this box is kind of a mess. These boxes are starting to get rare and uh, hard to find in working condition for an affordable price. So of course, what we're gonna focus on is the installation of one of these. This kit obviously came from console five. So what does the kit consist of? What are we going to need? What's the basic deal? Well, for starters, we're gonna need some hookup wire, of course. Now, I'm actually not gonna be using this hookup wire. I'm gonna be using something a little bit different, which I'll show you later. It's got uh, two little ceramic capacitors, which you actually won't need for the purposes of this particular video. It's also going to come with an additional tiny little uh, ca uh, ceramic capacitor. I believe this is a one picofarad capacitor. This actually goes across the power input jack that will be installed, just to provide a little bit of additional AC filtering going into the console. You are also going to have a diode, a fairly large diode like you see here. The purpose of this is just to provide some reverse polarity protection in case you should plug the wrong power supply into the Atari 5200. This diode would prevent that power from getting to the rest of the systems. And then we're going to be replacing the large filter capacitor with a replacement 470 microfarad capacitor here. Although, if for some reason you have all of these parts already on hand but may not have a 470 microfarad capacitor, that's not a problem. You can actually use the original capacitor that's in the system if you want to. Now, there's one other piece I'm going to be adding to this, and I've actually already spoken to Console 5 about possibly adding something like this permanently to the kit. It's strictly just kind of a ease of service kind of deal, but it's to include something like this. Instead of the standard power cables that he provide or that are provided now with the kit, I'm trying to see if we can't get something like this put into the kit instead. And the purpose behind this is to give us a means to disconnect the DC power. And this will become more, you'll understand more uh, as we do the installation why this is important. I'm going to definitely be utilizing this in this install, but uh, it's possible that this might be getting added to future kits. So with that, let's uh, go ahead and I'm going to take the top cover off on this 5200 and kind of break it down as much as we need to to work on it. I'll be right back. I now have the main board removed from the case of the 5200, and I want to show you specifically the areas that we're going to focus on. Now, the good thing about this particular modification is if the only thing you're interested in doing is just changing out the power section on this or just uh, changing out or modifying the power the way it works currently, you do not have to remove the RF shield to do this modification, which is kind of cool. I am currently focused on the power section where the main filter cap is right here in addition to the RF modulator and just barely out of focus here off the frame are the heat sinks for the uh, voltage regulators. There are two primary components you have to remove from the 5200 four port main board in order to do the modification. They are the large filter capacitor, which will be replaced with a new capacitor that usually comes with the kit. Although as I stated in the beginning of the video, if you do not have, or if you're using components that you already have on hand and you're not using one of the kits, you can actually reuse the original filter capacitor if you want, that's not a problem. The other component that has to be removed is the inductor right here. Now this inductor is what's providing the voltage from off of the positive voltage rail along here to from the RF cable. So basically the voltage coming in off the RF cable is filtered out, comes back through this inductor from this side over here and then back to the main power rail which goes back towards the voltage regulators. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to 
switch over to the next shot where I will already have these components removed. Okay, now that I have those components removed out, I'm ready to add in the new components. Specifically, I'm going to be adding in a new capacitor, and I'm going to be adding in this diode as well that I mentioned earlier. Now, what we're going to need to do with this particular modification, with the additional components that we need to add, is we need to verify where those components need to go. Now, this four port unit is a little bit different than some I've seen in the past, in that the section here, which is largely the negative ground plane, if I can point to that better, there we go, there's usually a few more holes or vias to be able to attach wires to along here. And we don't have as many. I've got one that's right here in front of where I'm pointing, and then there's another one here which was used for the actual capacitor. And then just opposite of that, this large trace all along here is the positive side, or the positive rail, where we will put our DC voltage. Now, normally on most four port units, there's also additional vias on this rail as well to help with installing our wiring too. If we look further along down here, we will see right here is another via that's attached to this main rail for the DC input power. So what I'm going to do, because there's already a via here, is I'm going to attach the positive wiring on that via, very similar to how it would have been before, and then I'm going to be able to attach the negative along the ground plane somewhere here. In fact, I'll just use that secondary via I've got here for that. I may have to widen it a little bit using my uh, reaming or boring tool that I have with my solder kit. But if nothing else, what you could also do similarly again is just scrape away some of the solder mask. There's plenty of it here. And just attach the uh, negative wiring or your ground wire directly on top of that, which is plenty of solder to hold it in place. So the diode here is going to go into the positive side that I was talking about. And specifically, you'll notice the diode has a band on one side of it, and that band needs to point towards our power connection direction. So in this case, the band will point towards where my via is. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and get some of my wiring cut a little bit and get it attached up onto this diode and show you how I'm going to put it in place. Okay, I have some of the preliminary work done on the main board in that I've got my diode and power wire connected up together here, connected into the positive rail, which goes into the positive side of the new capacitor here. And then the ground wire off the DC goes into the negative ground plane over here, or the ground plane, which is also where the negative side of the uh, polarity for the capacitor has gone in as well. So what's left to do now is the rest of the modification on the bottom shell and final wiring up of the new DC jack.
Okay, with the final components installed into the case shell and soldered up, all that's left to do now is just to connect my two ends for my disconnects here to complete the connectivity between the main board to the new DC jack. Now, I don't know if you saw it in the video or not, but that small capacitor, that small ceramic capacitor that's included in the kit does actually get soldered between the positive and negative terminals on the DC jack itself. It's really just there for additional AC filtering and does not cause a short in the system. So I don't know again if you saw that, but I just soldered my leads on to the positive and to the negative leads real quick and then uh, put some shrink tubing in place to prevent any shorts internally and then another piece of shrink tubing on top just to clean it up and uh, seal it all in. So yeah, again all that's left now is just to connect the two sections here and kind of tuck them out of the way a little bit. And then we're ready to power on this 5200 using the new DC jack. And uh, so the, what will follow are some uh, additional close-up pictures of some of the work in addition to the DC jack as it looks on the back of the case.